question about um, can you discuss your experiences at the border facilities that you were able to visit? I think it was in 2018. Well, you want to you know about my experience as a act, community activist? Yeah. Well, my, my interest started back in the 80s. I mean, you know me, I, I'm going to give you a short story answer. <laughs> Just kidding. With uh, amnesty, you know. We have, we have millions of, of immigrants coming in. We've always had immigrants coming in, and they will continue to come in. Why? Because we're an immigrant country. Contrary to what people think, you know. We're an immigrant country. Some some immigrants have been here, a hundred years, some two hundred. Some of us, like my 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 grandparents and and my dad, were born here, so the border crossed us. You know, when you know, my mother came from Mexico, but that's a different story. Anyway, so so we're reading. So I'm reading in the paper that children are being put in pens. They're being separated from the parents as they as they're coming in, asking for asylum. Mm -hmm. These are not undocumented, whatever. These are asylum seekers, which is a different, it's a legal process. They're supposed to be treated differently. So we said, whoa, we got to do something about it. So we got the community involved. But anyway, so what, what happened with, with El Paso is that we know that El Paso became like the, like the, the center, the, the center of the problem. There's a word for it. I'm just, I, I, I just can't, you know. And so, so what happened is that one of my friends, another a fellow catalog, f asked me to go to El Paso with him. Asked, you know, I, I, we talk about it. We said, well, what can we do? He said, well, let's go to El Paso. Let's go check it out. So we went there, and our job, I, I wanted to do is, there is a congresswoman, Veronica, Veronica Escobar, who has done a really lot of good work with, with immigrants. There's also a woman. Uh, who worked for the America's Immigration Program, who works with the mothers of the, of the K children. So we went there and we were trying to figure out a way that we could connect with them. Now remember, all this time, the asylum seekers here, in, in, they would go to the border, to Yuma, to San Luis, which is, you know, San Luis, the border, or to, or to Nogales, not to Douglas, that's a whole different story, out there. But anyway, and and so they would go, and then they would get processed, and then they would be sent to a, they would be sent in buses to churches, with nothing, just you know families, you know, or they would be dropped off at the bus stations. They still do that. They still do that, by the way. So, so here we are, like, what the hell are we going to do about this? So we went to, we went there, and we were, we were trying to figure out well, what it, what are all the things that can be done. So we had a chance to meet with some people that were doing the uh, the as Ascension House. Uh, we met with some people that, that were doing work with them, and they began to realize that this is a huge project. I mean, you're, you're talking about 10 to 15,000 people that are being released here in Phoenix with nothing. So we were, so part of my, part of my interest was was first of all what can be done legally and stuff like this. That's a that's a job for ACLU and of course the Victor American Legal Defense Fund, some of the uh, so, uh, Center for Poverty and the Law Center, whatever. But immigration is is critical for this country. At the same time, very conf we're very confused about it. The laws are just terrible. They have some bad laws. You know, like for example. Right now, they decided that when you ask for asylum, you get back sent to the country that you crossed. So some of the people that are coming here from Guatemala, from uh, Salvador, El Salvador, from are being sent to Mexico because they crossed Mexico. So they stay there until they're going to be they're going to be called. I, I, it's kind of, it's kind of convoluted what I'm saying, but okay. What I'm trying to get to the point is this, that all this time the people need legal services, but they also need commodities. They need to survive. They need food. They need clothing. They need places to sleep. They, have like, they need medicine. They, so this is what our groups have been done. It's a coalition. So, we, so a lot of, so, and, and, and I'm just one of them. There's a woman named uh, Pat Stonebrenner that, we, that I work with. 
an excellent lady. She's she's been able to to create all these programs, working with Aquino Border Institute, with, who pro, who has who provides shelter in Nogales, Sonora, in Mexico. We, she deals with the Florence Project. She deals with the Catholic Church, you know, the churches, and and then we're dealing with you deal with the Protestant churches, and then at the same time, like the there was a there's a welcome center we developed in, in one of the old schools became a center. It's a, it's alive, but it needs resources. So all this time, you know, we we've been trying to raise money for food for things like that. So that becomes kind of the the idea to go to El Paso was what things can be done. And most of them are, are legal. See, for example, in, in when they separate the children and they detain them, there is something called a Flores decision. There was a, there was a, there was a lawsuit filed in the, in the 80s that says that children can only be kept for three days and that children cannot be separated from their, their parents. But they were separating them. And not only separating them, but, but you know, like keeping them for a long time. I don't know if people realize there's like about 70,000 immigrants right now in detention, and at least 5,000 or 6,000 are children. So, I mean, you know, it's, they're, still, they're still out there. It's just that we can't keep up with everything. You know, here, now, now we're thinking, oh, we gotta send food and, and clothing and support to Nogales, to San Luis, to Mexicali, you know. It's just it's just very hard. It's like, you know, like so so thousands of volunteers, you know, and I'm and I I just give a lot of that's that's what I'm saying about my my understanding about volunteers are like you know, you ask me about just they're the ones that, that make this country. You know. I don't care I don't care what you know, yeah you can be an elected official, you can be whatever, but if you get elected, you need volunteers. <laughs> Everybody, everything depends on on the goodwill of this of Americans. You know, I don't care. I don't care what people tell you. you know? Not it's not like oh he did it. No, it takes it takes millions of people like to do something. So that's kind of the kind of like summary. You know, but the details the details about about immigration and stuff like this is that there has to be a reform. The laws are just are just terrible. Right now, they, you know, there is a there is a threat that DACA students will lose their status. We know that the SWAT SWAT teams are already trained in immigration to do raids in in major cities, in uh, Boston, Chicago, Los Angeles, probably Phoenix. They're going to come in and and just grab people and deport them. And people know stories about American citizens being <laughs> deported. You know? Anyway, so that's kind of the the passion that you know the, the and 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 what is what is hard about this is that there's other I- issues that are just as important, but you're sort of like <laughs> you got to choose one. You know, you can you know you can't deal with you know like healthcare. You know, healthcare is a big problem in this country. You know, income inequality. You know, not. I'm not supporting any any candidate, but I'm just talking that way, you know. But I mean, you know, like all these all these issues that are real, you know. We we see homeless, you know. One of my friends, my college, one of my college roommates, uh, Humberto Lopez, became a, a, a multimillionaire. He just bought a he bought a old Holiday Inn, and he refurbished it, and he opened up a homeless center in Tucson. So it's like you know, ten stories. So in in the base in the and it's got like 20, 30 agencies to support. Going back to what's in the wraparound, the, the incubation, it's, it's important for, you know, like if you're gonna deal with veterans, for example, if you're gonna deal with immigrants, you know, you have to somehow, you have to be able to coordinate these things. You know, like you can't just, they're not isolated. See what happens is that right now it's real fragmented. Everything's like, you know, fragmented, you know, so. So you've got veterans who are who are getting housing, who are getting benefit, but there's like there's veterans that are committing suicide every day. You know what I'm saying? And yet nobody talks about them. You know? Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Oh, 